Right. Uh, good morning, grade nine learners. We are starting with our lesson this uh, morning. And of course, it will be based on two topics which are related. The first one being the 2D shapes, followed by the 3D objects. And of course, in the 2D shapes, I'm going to summarily focus on the square as well as the rectangle. And of course, we will do a great deal of work on the 3D objects, which will look at uh, a wide range of uh, 3D objects, such as the, uh, the, the cube, together with uh, the cuboid as well, the triangular prism, uh, the rectangular prism, which is also a cuboid, and of course, the, some of the pyramids. And I hope that by the end of this lesson, we will all appreciate the difference between the 2D shapes and the 3D objects. Without any waste of time, I just want to once again highlight the importance of calculating the perimeter and the area of the squares together with uh, the rectangles, but also to describe and compare the 3D objects in terms of the faces, the vertices, as well as the edges. If you look at this, uh, shapes in, in the board here, you can see that we are now talking about the types of triangles. And of course, we have got a, a quite a range. You can see we have a rectangle, the square, the rhombus, as well as the isosceles triangle. And without doubt, I'm defining now the perimeter of a square. And you can see that we have a square which consists of uh, the length of two centimeters in this case. And if you have checked, uh, the square is a four-sided figure. And in order to calculate the perimeter of a square, you should know by now that the most important thing is to walk the distance around the edge of the shape. If you start at the corner, the top left corner, you walk downwards, the distance around the edge of the shape, right up until you come back to the top corner, which is on the left hand side. And you shall have completed your race, which is also known as the perimeter. So if you want to calculate the perimeter of any uh, geometric figure, you need to remember the distance around the edge. That is the definition of our perimeter. And of course, in the same note, if you want to calculate the area of the square or any other uh, geometric figure, in this case being the square, you need to remember that there's a formula to do this. And the formula to calculate the area of any square is given by the formula A equals to length multiplied by, by length. And I see that Nosi Popungula has already demonstrated the ability to calculate the perimeter of the square. In this case, Nosi says P is equal to 4S. And of course, S stands for side. So you can see that the side is two centimeters. And I can see quite honestly, Nosipo has already substituted the value of two multiplied that by four, which gives us eight. And what is important, Nosipo and the rest of the class and everyone else who's watching and listening, what is very important is to, to also make sure that you include the 
units of measurement. And in this case, the units of measurement is in centimeters. Therefore, the perimeter, if you walk around the, the distance around the edge of the shape, in this case, will be eight centimeters. In other words, you add two plus two plus two plus two, and this will give you eight centimeters. Alternatively, as Nosipo has said, you simply multiply two by four. Uh, four, which stands for four sides, and then two, which stands for for one side. So one side is two centimeters, and if you multiply that by four, you get eight centimeters. So basically, this is how we calculate the perimeter of a square when it comes to grade nine mathematics. And of course, I'm going to zoom now directly into the next uh, equation here, uh, or in the next uh, slide, rather. We are looking at each of the following uh, lengths. In this case, once again, we talk about the square. And we are now looking at the perimeter once again, just as we did with the previous one. You can see that there are ways, different ways to calculate the perimeter. One of the ways is to add all the sides, all the four sides, you add them together to find the perimeter. That is the distance around the edge of the shape. So as you can see quite clearly, the blue writings there, P is equal to six plus six plus six plus six. And this is equal to 24 centimeters. This is mainly because one side of the square is given by the value of six centimeters. And it should be clear at this point that the alternative way is to use the formula. So once again, you don't have to memorize any formula. You just have to understand the meaning of a perimeter. Once you know what a perimeter means, it doesn't really matter what the formula is. You can be able to find the perimeter without using the formula. The problem is that some of the learners just memorize the formula and thereafter, if they forget the formula, then they cannot be able to calculate the given concepts such as a perimeter as well as area. Now, alternatively, as you've seen there, 4s, you once again multiply uh, 6 by, by, by uh, 4 there, because remember, one of the sides there is 6 centimeters. So if you multiply 6 by 4, you get 24. So 24 centimeters will be our perimeter. And then, we come to the area. You can see that the area of the square has not been calculated in this case. We have not calculated the area of the square. And I want someone to do this. I see that in addition to what Nosipo Pugula has written with, in relation to the perimeter, Nosipo has once more taken the time and the trouble to calculate the area of the square. And in this case, Nosipo says the area of the square is equal to S squared. And correctly so, that is correct. That is S squared. In other words, you multiply the side by itself. Alternatively, you can call it the length. I have no problem if you call it the length. You multiply the length by itself in order to get the area. And of course, the manner in which we do this is that we say 
side multiplied by side, which is uh, the side given is six. So if you multiply six by six, you get 36 or six squared. So six squared will be six multiplied by six, which is uh, 36. I hope that it makes sense what we have, have done here. And of course, now we need to carry on. The next point, of course, will be to look at uh, just an activity which I want us to do. I hope that you have taken the time to analyze the manner in which we calculate the perimeter as well as the area. And lastly, you can see that when we are working with the square, as I've just indicated, you multiply uh, the base times the height. That is how they've defined it here. Since it is a square, all sides are equal in length, you multiply A by A. So A squared is uh, the case in point. And if A is equal to three units, then the area will be equal to nine square units. And how, how do you get the nine square units? You multiply three by three. And basically, that is uh, one of the ways in which uh, you can find the area of a square. I'm now going to take the time just to give you some work on the area of a square as well as the perimeter. So we need to calculate the area and the perimeter of a square as well as the, those of a rectangle in this case. And I hope that you have a pen and a paper with you and you can be able to use uh, the given formula just to find the area as well as the perimeter of the two squares. Let's find the area and the perimeter. Right, uh, I see that a comment is already made in the group chat. Once again, coming from Nosipo. Nosipo Pungula, we, who says that the perimeter is 4S, and then since the side uh, is 10, then the perimeter will be 4 multiplied by 10 in order to get uh, Yes, you have multiplied four by 10 in order to get 40 centimeters. So that's the first one A. And I see that Tandon Gubani has decided to calculate the area of the, the square by using the formula A, A is equal to S multiplied by S. So you multiply the side by itself and of course, the side is 10 centimeters, as you know. Therefore, 10 times 10 gives you 100. Great. No Sipo, Pungula, as well as Tando Gubanit, you have done the, the correct work. I see that No Sipo is back again to calculate the perimeter of the rectangle whose length is 65 six centimeters and the breadth is 30 centimeters and you say the perimeter would be 95 centimeters. I have to remind you, uh, Nosipo, uh, if you want to finalize this question, please make use of a pencil and a paper and draw the rectangle. And just as we did with the previous uh, 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 figures, like the one that we did here, just demonstrate to us like this one here. As you can see this figure, uh, it, you have drawn a square and then we have shown you now all the sides. So I want you to do the same with the rectangle 
and show all the sites before you can calculate the perimeter. You need to show all the sites. Right, let's go now back to Tando Gubani. Uh, Tando has now done the area for the rectangle and the formula there, I fully agree with the formula. A is equal to length multiplied by breadth. So L times B, that's the correct uh, formula. And of course, 65 multiplied by 30, you get uh, 1,950 centimeters. Great. Uh, Ohanze says the perimeter. All right, I see Ohanze has done it differently. Uh, I hope that you are watching there or no support. Perhaps you are busy with the perimeter. Uh, if you can look at what Ohanze said, Ohanze says P will be 65 times 2 plus 30 times 2. Why do you think uh, uh, Ohanze multiplied by 2 in this case? That's because uh, you are working with a rectangle. Remember, in a rectangle, there are two equal sides. So basically, you will multiply the first side, 65 by 2. And then you also multiply 30 by 2. So 65 times 2 will give you 130, and 30 times 2 will give you 60. Now, if you add 60 and 130, you get 190 centimeters. So yes, uh, Ohanza is correct. That is the perimeter. So I hope Nosi Pungula, you have seen the perimeter now, and, and you ho hopefully correct your work. Uh, you only added uh, two sides, but remember, the rectangle consists of four sides, okay? So you added two sides, uh, 65 and 30, to get 95. So basically, all that you needed to do now is to multiply the, the 95 that you got. You have to now multiply that by two. That is basically what you need. And I hope that it makes uh, sense. And uh, this brings us to the end of uh, the 2D uh, lecture or the 2D shape uh, lecture. Then we can proceed to the 3Ds now. Uh, let me go now to check. Nosipo has written there. Uh, the perimeter, okay, and then of course, half a base. Okay, you say two into 65 uh, plus 30, yes, yes, definitely. You, you don't have to multiply the two, uh, uh, no simple, you just add. Yes, I can see that you, you, you corrected that. That was the mistake, yes, you, you multiply everything by two. So you add 65 and 30 and thereafter, you multiply those uh, by two. So definitely we really need to find ways and means uh, just to ensure that we calculate correctly. Right. And now we need to proceed just to the next one. But before we get there, remember, before we can even look at the, the next, uh, uh, 3D objects, just to recap, the 2D shapes, those are flat uh, shapes on the surface. And of course, you can just draw them at, at any time, be it a rectangle or a square or a triangle or any other geometric figure. We have also spoken about the perimeter and the area in a, a square particularly where the length is six centimeters there. And then we have that. And then we also spoke about the perimeter of the square, uh, which is calculated to be 24 centimeters. And we've also done the area of the same square where we multiplied six by six to get 36 
square centimeters. So remember that the area will always be in the in square centimeters or, or any square units uh, of measurement. And I've, I've basically taken you through the area of a square as well, just to demonstrate that we multiply A by A. And this is what we have done in relation to the 2D shapes. And now without any doubt, let's continue now with the 3D, uh, the 3D objects. Right, we have got the 3D objects which are demonstrated above. The first one is the cuboid followed by the cube and of course the cube is followed by uh, the sphere and the cone. So these uh, shapes, the cuboid is more like a box together with the cube. If you know what a box looks like, that is what a cuboid looks like. So it is an object, we call it an object because this is something that can be, you know, consists of the height as well. Remember in the 2D objects, so the difference between the 2D shapes and the 3D objects uh, is the height. So the 2D shapes do not have a height. They only have the length and the breadth because they are flat surfaces. But the 3D objects are not flat surfaces. These are objects. That's why we call them objects because you can actually use them uh, like a box. You can actually use it to put uh, anything inside there and then close it. It consists of a wide range of faces as we are going to reflect uh, today. Today we are going to reflect on the number of uh, shapes, particularly those that are found in this particular uh, manner, the, the 3D objects. And of course, I've given you just a wide range of uh, objects. In this case, you can tell that uh, we have got quite a wide range of uh, 3D objects. If you look at the top one there, we've got something called a sphere, which looks like a, a circle there, which emanates from a circle or a soccer ball rather, which is followed by a, a prism. You can see that that prism consists of uh, the face of a pentagon and the, and the bottom face as well that is a pentagon. So we call this a pentagonal prism. And next to it, you also have another prism which uh, is made up of uh, six uh, vertices there. And of course, that is also known, that is known as the, the hexagonal prism. So basically, the hexagonal prism is there together with uh, the pentagonal prism. And we will look also at any other pyramids that may arise as we proceed. So basically, you can see we also have a square-based uh, pyramid. We also have the triangular prism. And we'll come to that as we carry on now. So, some of the most important uh, 3D objects that we're going to look at today consists of a cube, as I've already mentioned, but also the pyramid, the triangular prism you can see there at the bottom. The rectangular uh, prism is also known as a cuboid. And of course the cube 
which emanates from the squares, the cone, as well as the cylinder. So those are some of the examples of the 3D objects. So when you talk of the examples of the 3D objects, you are talking about the, the different uh, 3D objects which uh, are found to be represented in this particular slide. And we are not going to waste any time but to proceed into some of the concepts just to redefine the triangular prism as we know it. And of course, you will recall that uh, this uh, triangular prism will have different uh, vertices as well as the different number of faces as well as the number of edges. So as an example, I'm going to start to do the first one for you and perhaps we'll do the second and the third. Then you can have an opportunity for your class activity. Let's look at the first uh, triangular prism there. I've chosen to start with the number of uh, vertices, the number of uh, faces, and the number of edges. So remember, when we talk of the vertices, uh, the vertices is a plural for vertex, and that means uh, an angular shape. So meaning that those corners, which where uh, angles are formed, we call them the vertices at the corners. All you look at the, all the corners that are there. So basically, that's the number of corners that you have in a particular shape. So I'm going to zoom now directly into the triangular prism. The triangular prism. So you, you should know by now that a triangular prism consists of two triangular faces, the bottom one and the top one. That is what a triangular prism looks like. And so in between, it is joined by some rectangles there, about three of those. So the number of vertices, you can see that obviously the first uh, triangle consists of three angles. And the second triangle also has three angles. So what does this mean? This means the number of vertices in a triangular prism are, or is six. The number is six. So the number of vertices will be six. Why six? Because each triangle consists of three angles. So basically, that is what we have. Each triangle consists of about three angles. And therefore, if there are six, you get uh, six uh, uh, vertices in a triangular prism. And the faces, who can tell me how many faces are there in a triangular prism? How many faces does a triangular prism have? The triangular prism will have two triangular faces and three rectangular faces. Remember the net. It's very important that when you do your, or when you construct a triangular prism, you must be able to have a net. And you see, you will see that in that net, the net will consist of three rectangles and two triangles. So when we look at, at the number of faces, you'll have two triangular faces and three rectangular faces. So I can see James has already uh, done that for us. And James says, we, we are going to have five faces. I fully agree with you, James. You will definitely have five faces of a triangular prism. 
and the number of edges, how many edges are there in the triangular prism? How many edges are there in the triangular prism? How many edges are there? James is bad now and James says there will be nine. Nine edges, that is what James is saying. Nine edges. James says there will be nine edges uh, in a particular triangular prism. Yes, there will be nine. Uh, remember the edge simply means uh, where the two shapes uh, meet or where the different uh, shapes meet. So if you look at those three triangles, uh, where they meet together with uh, the rectangular faces, you will see that all in all, because you have got three of the triangles there, and you also have two of the of the of the rectangle of the triangles, when they meet there, it will be nine times. There will be nine of the meeting points known as the edges. So remember the edge is very important. Now let's go to the rectangular prism quickly. Just the rectangular prism. How many vertices does a rectangular prism have? Remember the rectangular prism is the is the cuboid. I've shown you the cuboid. Uncle says there will be eight uh, vertices. Well, uh, right. Yes, I definitely agree with you. Remember that uh, the rectangular prism is made up of uh, uh, faces as well. So one of the faces there will be a rectangle, which consists of four angles. We all know that every rectangle has got four angles. So if it's two uh, rectangles, then you'll have uh, eight uh, vertices. Okay, so you join the two uh, rectangles to form a rectangular prism. Unkabati, I agree with you. And then how many faces are there in the rectangular prism? How many faces? In a rectangular prism. So the number of faces will be six. I fully agree with you. I see that uh, Ungabet uh, together with uh, uh, Michael, uh, or is it Michael? I'm not sure. Uh, you have found six. You have found uh, six number of faces. And it is true that uh, the number of faces will be six. I fully, fully agree. And then the number of edges. Remember the edge. So the way the. So the edge there will be uh, twelve, and of course uh, the. Next one there will be the edge, which is 12. So I see that uh, James says we have got 12. Can we carry on now with the cube? Just the cube. Let's find out the number of uh, the vertices there in a cube. Right, uh, let's carry on. Let's carry on. Just to demonstrate the next one, which is a cube, the number of 
vertices. So the number of uh, vertices the tandem table says there will be four in a in a cube, but I, I, I'm saying that the cube will be the same as the as the rectangular prism. So basically, you will have eight. And I see that uh, Unkavets has correctly demonstrated that we have got eight. So there will be eight vertices. And the next one, the number of faces. What is the number there? Right, uh, I see that Ungava says there will be six uh, faces of a cube. Yes, a cube basically will have uh, six faces. Uh, just like any box, uh, you know, with four corners there. Uh, you can take the example of a microwave as well, which consists of uh, six faces, the front face, the back face, the two sides, and then the top face and the bottom face. So basically, Tadjim Tembu, you are correct, it will be six. And the last part is the number of edges, how many are those? The number of edges, can we quickly do that? Can we proceed? Right, uh, we are proceeding now. We are going to the pentagonal prism, uh, which is uh, made up of two pentagons. So basically, you have got a pentagonal uh, prism, which is made up of uh, two pentagons. And uh, remember, that uh, you join, you simply join the two pentagons from all the corners. You join each and every corner there to have a pentagonal prism. And if you check thoroughly, what will be the number of vertices in a, excuse me, in a, in a pentagonal prism? Remember, the vertices, as I said, uh, those are the angles. So basically, you have got, uh, okay, I'm just gonna take you back to the example as Unkabetsi says, you want to see the example. The example of a pentagonal prism is there at the top. Let's go to the second one at the top. That's a pentagonal prism. The one at the top. But don't focus on those faces. Uh, the faces are, are not those of a pentagonal prism. I'm talking about the first one. But you, if you go down the last, the second last row, that's where you will find the correct faces of the prism. All right. That is where you find the correct number of faces of a, a prism. So we are looking at the vertices now and we are saying there will be 10 vertices. Remember, there are five angles in a pentagon. So since there are two pentagons in a prism, then it will be five plus five, which is uh, 10. All right. I see Unkabezi, I hope that uh, I've shown you can everybody see the shapes on the screen? I hope that you can. Uh, I, I'm not sure if you can see that, but of course, 
we are now talking about the pentagonal prism and we have looked at the vertices and we found the vertices to be uh, 10. So there are 10 uh, vertices, five for the first uh, pentagon and five in the second pentagon. And then the next shape. Okay, before we go to the next shape, let's go now to the number of faces. The number of faces in a prism, pentagonal prism. How many faces are there? So you can see that uh, when we look at this uh, uh, 3D object, you can tell that the top face is a pentagon and the bottom face is also a pentagon. Now, when you join the corners, all the corners of the pentagons, when you join the two pentagons together, you will see that we form a very nice uh, shape which consists of about five faces. And so five faces in the center there, plus the two other faces, the top face and the bottom face will be uh, seven. So it will be seven. Right, I understand what you mean, uh, Unkabi. I will just uh, find a way to share that with you. So that will be seven. The last one is the edges. How many edges will be there? Uh, all in all, you can see that the middle structure will have five edges and then the top, uh, the top uh, pentagon will have five and the bottom pentagon will also have five. So five times three, so you'll have about 15. So the number of edges will be 15. I hope that it makes sense. And as we proceed now to the next one, which is the hexagonal prism, once again, you can see that the number of vertices, remember in a hexagon, a hexagon is a six-sided shape on its own. So how many angles are there in one hexagon alone? So you will have six uh, vertex or vertices rather in one of the, the shapes, which is a hexagon. So since you have got two hexagons, then it means you'll have 12. So 12 vertices will be found. Then followed by the edges, how many edges are there? In fact, before we go to the edges, the number of faces. So you'll see that the faces that will be created in the metal structure, if you go to the top right structure there, that is the hexagonal uh, prism, you can see that uh, we have got about uh, six faces in the middle and then the top face and the bottom face. So total is eight faces. So in total, you will have eight faces. And the last one is the edges. So you have six edges in the middle there and then you'll also have six at the top and then six at the bottom. So therefore, six times three, is 18, so you left 18 edges, and that is your, your hexagonal prism. And then we also have the square-based pyramid. Remember the square-based pyramid? In this geometry, the square-based pyramid, you have the square at the bottom, and then the poles that move from each uh, corner of the square meet at a single apex point. And that apex point is known as, uh, it's one of the uh, vertices as well. And it completes your, your, your 3D object to be a pyramid. So the pyramids are different from the prisons. Uh, the pyramids are different from the prisms in a sense that all the points will meet at one point. So if you want to ask me how many uh, vertices are there in a square-based pyramid, I will, my answer will be the square consists of four angles, right? 
But that apex point where every uh, thing meets, where all the, uh, the poles meet, it's also a vertex on its own. It's just one vertex. Therefore, if you add one and four, you get five. So basically, the number of vertex of vertices there will be five. And lastly, uh, the number of faces, you'll have one face at the bottom and then four surrounding faces, which also gives you five. And the number of edges in this case will be, will be eight. And this of course brings us to the, to the end of our discussion. But for your homework, I think you can just finalize the, the, the pentagonal pyramid as well as the hexagonal pyramid. You do the same table, but equally, I want you to tell me how many uh, uh, faces does the pentahedron has, as well as uh, a heptahedron, octahedron as well, just to check the number of faces. Once again, this lesson is brought to you by the STEM Digital uh, School in partnership with uh, Sasol Foundation until we meet again, thank you very much indeed.